Pyramid Spiritual Science Academy is a very important part of our movement, Pyramid Spiritual Society movement. This academy has been started to filter out core spiritual science statements from the whole general mass of literature available. The spiritual literature is very vast. But out of this vast literature, some core principles, core statements have been collected by the pyramid spiritual social movement. And that's what we impart to an aspiring student of spiritual science. First of all, what is science? Science is impersonal. It is not personal. It does not depend upon your personality. It is an objective reality. So, spiritual science means objective reality about the subjective reality. The spirit is the subject. Now I am speaking and you are listening. I am the subject speaking and you are the subject listening. Okay. Now, science is the objective observation science. Spiritual means subjective, the source. <laughs> now, spiritual science means objective realities, objective analysis. About the subjective realities. That is the spiritual science. How I speak, how I think, how I move, what impact it has on me, how I speak has an impact on how I speak, how I think has an impact on how I think. Okay. How I eat is again having an impact on how I eat. Understand? Supposing I am eating more now, so much, then it has an impact on my eating tomorrow. Tomorrow I cannot eat anything. My system is out of control. So I have to fast. Why I am fasting tomorrow? Because I have over eating today. Indigestion. Right? So, how you eat impacts on how you eat in the future. What you think now impacts on the what you think future. What you eat now impacts upon what you are going to eat tomorrow. If you eat chicken and mutton today, tomorrow you are going to be spied. Okay. So what you speak now will change what you speak tomorrow. The friends that you are keeping today will impact on the friends that you are keeping tomorrow. If you change your friends now, you will also change your friends future. Everything, what you do in the present, impacts on your future and creates your future in that particular direction. So these are all laws, objective laws. What you think, what you do, what you eat, how you sleep, how you think, all these things, they change your future speech, future thinking, future mind, future body, future life, future realities. So, event formation has got strict laws. So, these are life events, life uh, experience, they are all uh, objective uh, realities. As much as any physics or any other subject, the object of reality, engineering, the subject to science, the life science is also an object of reality and it is available for analysis and uh, experimentation and uh, uh, deriving of universal laws after that. So all those universal laws which have been obtained by analysis and experimentation, the scientific method, applying with the scientific method to the subjective systems, that is 
spiritual science. So, here we make this spiritual science revealed to school boys, college boys, school teachers, college teachers. That is the essential idea of the Pyramid Spiritual Science Academy. To educate the school teachers, to educate the college teachers, so that they in turn educate the, their works, either in the school or in the college. Here, you have to understand the core spiritual science statements and ruminate upon them and practice them in your day to day life so that you will understand the universal truths about spiritual science. If you speak unscientifically, then you will gather people who are equally unscientific around you. But if you learn to speak scientifically, you will gather only those people who also are of the similar temperament, who are also scientific in their speech. I am a spiritual scientist, therefore in front of me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 people are there who are interested in spiritual science. See, I have gathered you. Through the way I live, I gathered this set of friends. Had I not been interested in spiritual science, do you think would you be here? No way. So, I have attracted you. Life attracts life. This is a great spiritual science principle. There are many spiritual science statements. One great statement is the law of attraction. I attract you and you attract me. I am fascinated by you. Oh, students of spiritual science. You are also fascinated. Oh, teacher of spiritual science. Something new. When we went to school, there were no spiritual science there. Yeah. There was a department. There was no spiritual science. And you can see the result in the lives of people. They go out to the school. They go into the college. They come out of the college. They go into business. They go into life. But there is no spiritual science. So everybody is unhappy. Everybody is miserable. Everybody is ill. Diseased. They commit suicides, they commit murders, they spoil the environment, they spoil the ecology, they spoil the harmony between people. All because they are not exposed to spiritual science. The teachers in the school, the teachers in the college, they don't know what is this spiritual science. How can they tell others? But, this pyramid spiritual society movement for the past 30 years has been working very hard to collect all the core spiritual science statements from all the spiritual scientists of the world, both ancient, medieval and modern. For example, Veda Vyasa is an ancient spiritual scientist. Guru Nanak is a medieval spiritual scientist. Barbara Marsanyak is a modern spiritual scientist. They are all spiritual scientists. So we have gone through the whole study of the ancient spiritual scientists, the medieval spiritual scientists, and the new age spiritual scientists, and culled out so many things. And we present them in a very simplistic way to all the academies, the school and the college, especially the teachers. So that they understand and they in turn impart this to their words. I will give you some core statements. One of the core statements is like a fact like. If you change yourself, then you also automatically change your world. If you don't change yourself, you don't change your world. Because you attract the same world. What is the world? What is what is nothing but a group of people who are with whom you are living. That is your world. Right now you, you are my world. Something, somebody in China, Russia, they are not my world. 
the people around you, they are called the world. That is the technical meaning of the word. The word, word. Your world changes. Means the group of people who are around you changes because you change yours. If you want to learn music, then automatically you will go into a circle where all people love music. If you want to know history, if you want to do research in history, then you will go into like-minded guru. If you want spiritual science, again you are attracted to a, a guru where everybody is interested in spiritual science. So as, as you define yourself, you define your world. As you change yourself, you change your world. Your world is not Russia, America, India, China. No, your world is the group of people around you, always. With whom you are interacting. Right? The best way to change your world is to change yourself. Or the only way to change the world is to change yourself. So this is a core principle. Another core principle is that, or core truth is that, you are not a body. You are an Atma. You are a speck of energy, consciousness and wisdom. ECW. E. Everybody say E, e C, 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 W. Okay. E for energy, C for consciousness, W for wisdom. We are a speck of energy, we are a speck of consciousness, we are a speck of uh, wisdom. Okay. Yet we are not a speck. We are the whole, but for all practical speech, we say we are a speck. We are unbounded. We are unlimited in time and space, in our dimensions, we are unlimited. One of the most important things in spiritual science is to understand the law of paradoxes. You are simultaneously something and also something is the opposite of that something. That is it. You are simultaneously something and the opposite of that thing. Okay, that's a paradox. So, the law of paradox is there are many, many such quotes which you have to understand in spiritual science, which takes time, which takes training, which takes experimentation, okay, which takes a lot of group activity, group discussion, okay. Then you will understand one by one, one by one, many, many spiritual truths, facts. One of the core spiritual science facts is that if you harm others, you will be harmed. If you help others, you will be helped. This is the law of karma. If I help you, then somebody will help me, not necessarily you will help me. I will receive the help from somewhere else. I give you help and I will certainly receive help from either from yourself or from some other quarters which is equivalent to the help that I have rendered to others. This is the law of karma which is a grand spiritual science act. And all people act as if you know, there is no rule or law or principle in human affairs or in the affairs of the nature. Very funny. Very, very funny. All people who do not learn spiritual science are very, very funny. It is the other way of saying that they are all idiots. Civilized way of saying that they are very, very funny. Scientific way of saying this, very idiot person. You don't know the last karma? You don't know that you create your own things? How do you? You don't know that much? Very funny, very idiotic. Your headache came because, because of you, your cancer came because of you, your environment will come because of you, your health will come because of you. So this is our karma, what you do comes back to you. Multiform it. This is the law of karma. Another law is that every experience adds to your fabric of the soul. You are a soul. And every act experience gives you a richness of the soul which differentiates you from all other souls. 
Another spiritual science fact is that there are innumerable number of dimensions, innumerable number of galaxies, innumerable number of planets and life systems. Earth is a small one. So all these things. And we take birth many times. And we choose our own life pattern. Sometimes you are rich, sometimes you are poor, sometimes you are a lady, sometimes you are a judge. Sometimes you are you know, homosexual. You change. You choose all those things for variety of experiences. Okay. Every experience adds to the richness of the soul. This is another statement. No experience is discounted compared to any other experience, excepting killing others where there is no self defense is involved. If you are killing people and animals for eating them, eating the bodies, then you are very, you have to pay for it. You will pay for it. So, my dear friends, this Pyramid Spiritual Science Academy has been the brainchild of this great master Shivaram Paji. That is why very big He gave shape to all these things and produced many uh, textbooks on spiritual values for school students. Okay. And uh, they come in very handy for the would-be teachers of spiritual science to the would-be students of spiritual science. Once spiritual science comes, everything is taken care of in life. The physical health is the product of your your choices. Your mental, emotional health is the product of your choices. Your intelligence is the choice of is the product of your choices. Your spirituality, your wealth is the product of your choices. So how do you choose? What do you choose among many alternatives? Wise choice. Not unwise or reckless choice or random life or because somebody else said you blindly follow that guy or that religion and do it. No way. You have to be open minded, scientific. This is science. You must check up all that has come to you from your parents, from your religions, yeah. from your societies. You should use your personal intelligence to check out every statement. If you are a merchant of gems, when somebody takes, okay, Swamiji, you take this gem and give me one thousand dollars. First of all, we say, okay, you stay here, have a nice cup of coffee, it takes half an hour. So you just the gem, whether it is gem or not. If it is not a gem or some fake material, immediately you will give a call to the police. Then you say, some more cash in it also, you will just stay for 15 more minutes. I will give you your thousand dollars. You are such a very nice gem, perfect gem. Just stay. Okay, cash in it, drink cash in it. But cash in it will come, not the only police will go there. And they will catch what you see. You are selling a fake product. So, the facts that given to you, given to you by your parents and society, are they fake or are they genuine? Are they just belief systems or are they spiritual facts or existing only facts? You must check up. That is scientific temper. You must check up each and every statement. And who will check up? An expert on gems will only check up. So this expert on Choose spiritual person for a spiritual scientist. For example, one great spiritual scientist called as Jesus Christ said, I and my father are one. Where is your father? My father who is it who art in heavens. And I and you are one. 
He has created, he has shown many miracles to people. Out of five loaves of uh, five uh, uh, bread, he says, he has distributed to five thousand people. Yes or no? Then how did he do it? If he has done it, why can't he do it? If you believe that he has done it, there are two things. Either don't, don't believe him or believe him. If you don't believe, forget that matter out. But if you believe that yes, he has done that miracle, then why can't you do it? You must find out from him, hey Jesus, how did you do it? You teach me that. He will say, Swamiji, I have done that because of my meditation energy. Then you will put him a question, what is meditation? Okay, sit comfortably, put your hand, close your eyes, and start absorbing your breathing. Either you don't believe Jesus or believe Jesus, or either you don't believe uh, uh, Veda Vyasa or believe Veda Vyasa. If you don't believe, forget. But if you believe, then that's a science. Then you have to be scientific about it and learn the science. Okay. If you don't care about learning music, don't care. But if you want to care about music, you have to learn from a scientist of music. So my dear friends, this academy is here to give, to go to all the schools, to go to all the colleges and introduce this as a part of the regular curriculum. To train any number of teachers in this field so that they can intern teach others. Anyhow, some of the main core principles of the spiritual science are the result is that you must become a vegetarian. You must become a meditator. Then you, you must become a regular reader of all such books. Scientists. You know. So many people have given this wonderful wisdom. You have to study all of them. Ruminate on them. You know. As you study, you become that. As you listen, you become that. As you think, you become that. As you eat, you become that. What you become is what you eat. What you become is what you speak. What you become is what you listen. What you become is what you study. Right. So, listening is crucial. Reading is crucial. Thinking, making choices is crucial. Doing meditation is crucial. Becoming a vegetarian is crucial. They are so very crucial that all your health and wisdom and happiness depend upon that. And the whole world is miserable. A great spiritual scientist, 2500 years back, Gautama Buddha, he saw everywhere there is Dukkha, there is suffering. That's a scientific observation. And the next observation that all this Dukkha is because of Uncontrollable desires. Krishna, your desires are uncontrolled, erratic. Okay, you got no control on your desires. Krishna is that. And the third scientific truth is that your uncontrollable nature is because of lack of education. Avidya. Then you should. Have vidya, that is education, that is spiritual science. Which education? Spiritual science education. That your views should be perfect, your speech should be perfect, your choices should be perfect, your way of behavior, your, what you need should be perfect, what you listen should be perfect, what you put your attention on that should be concentration and what you are, the way you do meditation should be perfect. There are eight points to obtain su vidya, to Kick out the avidya in you, so that your your desires are very very controlled, mature, right? Yes, or reasonable. Then there will be no dukkha, no suffering. When all your speech, all your thoughts, and all your deeds, mainly your eating, they become right. Yes, you are called a right person. When you are speaking wrongly, eating wrongly, thinking wrongly, you are a wrong person. Another 
reserved for being the right person is enlightened. Another way of saying something about the wrong person is that you are not yet enlightened. You don't know still how to think. You don't know how to speak. You don't know how to eat. You don't know how to listen others. You are not yet enlightened. Here we teach you enlightenment because I am an enlightened fellow. What does enlightenment mean? I know what to speak and how to speak. When to speak. I know what to eat, how to eat and when to eat. I know what to think and when to think and how, how much to think and when, when not to think. So when you become right and proper in all the departments of your deeds and words and thoughts, you are the right person. You have overcome all the errors or unscientific methods in your speech, in your thoughts and in your deeds. You have become a spiritual scientist. You will go this happiness, but you will not achieve happiness until you become a spiritual scientist. And if you are not happy, you will make all others also unhappy. Because everything is infectious. Because we are all one organic system, what happens here affects you instantly. When I become enlightened, all those people who come near to me, touch me, they have wonderful gifts of enlightenment. Everything is infectious. That is another great spiritual science law. Everything is infectious. Your moods are infectious, your wisdom is infectious, your ignorance is infectious, your vibrations are infectious. Everything is infectious. It, it enters your systems unobtrusively. Understand? You don't know, you don't know that something is entering you, but it is entering you from me. And something from you is entering me. Everything is infectious. What happens to you has reverberations all over the cosmos. Of course, direct impact upon those people who are near you and very, very little impact on the part of people. But there is there. Impact is there. If you throw a small pond, small stone in a pond, the farthest also will have small people like this. This is a small stone you put in a pond and see the effect. It's a very beautiful way of seeing the effect of one instant on the whole. We just put a small pebble in a pond, then you see the vibrations, waves. Everything changes. So when you do meditation, when you increase your energy, when you increase, when you actualize your potential, then you are putting a big, you are changing the pebble, throwing a big stone in the society. So everything changes because of you. The more you do meditation, the more you gather energy, the more you become wise, the more you read books, the more you ruminate on spiritual science for truths, you change yourself, you change your vibrations. It does not impact, natural impact, because everything is infectious. The goal is to become a spiritual scientist. But before you become a scientist, you become a student. A student gathers all the materials. A scientist is the person who has digested all those materials. A student is the person who is about to digest all those. He wants to digest all those materials. He collected materials, but he has not digested them. A teacher is the person who has digested all those things. Before digestion, you are a student. After digestion, you are a teacher. You are a master. It takes a certain amount of time for digestion. You must give yourself a lot of time for the digestion to happen. Thank you, thank you, thank you.